So I made this e-bike from scrap metal and parts from the dumpster. Now I need to paint it. While I take it apart, I will show you everything I created to make this e-bike. Let's check out the custom front end. I hope this will give you new ideas and maybe inspire you to create a cool front end for your bike. Now I wanted to create something that looked old school and had a very soft suspension. The original design of this front end is very old. So I was able to find a lot of information about it. It's called a girder front end. I hope I'm saying that right. But my design is not so typical. To make it softer, I decided to use retracting springs instead of the usual massive compressing springs from an old bicycle. And that turned out to work great. This ride is very smooth. These springs came from a trampoline. Two of them take the load and a third one is the counter spring that keeps all of this together. It puts tension on the system and helps to smooth out the powerful return action of main springs. Otherwise, this is a very simple design. Materials are just random pieces of metal and tubing I found in a dumpster behind a metal shop. Holes are made for weight reduction and the final weight is 3.2 kilograms. The actual fork is made from tubes I chopped off from a couple of old bicycle frames. These tubes were seat stays, so they were small in diameter and had enough wall thickness. Perfect. The steerer tube and the head tube is also from an old bicycle. It's a very simple bearing system and very effective. Old and proven concept that works great. This stem is also a nice old school piece with a bolt in the center. Now here are a few tips to help with the main challenges of a build like this. Since all of these moving parts are connected with bolts and nuts, there is a challenge of tightening them up. You need very tight connections to prevent the structure from twisting like that. And at the same time you need to be able to use those connections as axles. So I found a round tube of suitable diameter and used that as bushings. A bushing is pinched between the outer part with the bolt and moves freely inside the inner part. These bushings are just slightly wider than the width of the inner part. Because of that, this connection can still move and be very tight at the same time. Here is a little trick for holding these parts in place and keeping correct measurements while welding. Take a couple of threaded bars, some nuts and use those as a jig for holding parts together. When you are ready to put together or take apart a spring configuration like this, you will need to apply some pressure on those main springs and then attach or remove the counter spring. For that I use a ratchet strap. It helps to prevent scratching any already painted parts like this front end. Be very careful when releasing this tension, it has a nice kick to it. Now it's a good idea to have front brakes. On this project I wanted some regular disc brakes. So I needed to create a mounting ground for a caliper. For that I took a couple of M6 tie bar connectors and welded those to a piece of metal and created a bracket. Then I connected the caliper to this bracket, placed it on the disc, pressed the caliper shut with a zip tie and tacked the bracket in place. Next I made a stupid mistake. I thought that this piece would help to keep the structure in its original shape, so I removed the caliper to do the final welding. And no, it did not. The heat made this tube bent like that. And the distance between bolt holes changed. I was lazy and decided not to redo this whole thing. So I took a drill and made the holes on the caliper a little bit bigger. To avoid this mistake, I should have kept an adapter like this attached to this bracket while welding. So overall, it did take me a lot of time to come up with all of the measurements for this design. I did some drawings and went through a lot of material and spring options. But that is just the basic boring work when making a design like this. You just need to put some time into it and it will pay off. To make this build, I used a grinder, a hand file, some drill bits and an old shitty MIG welder with flux core wire. Yes, gasless flux core wire. And still, even with limited resources and basic tools like that, this front end came out pretty nice. Subscribe to my channel to see my next video about this chopper e-bike. Check out other videos about this project in the description. Ask me in the comments if you have any questions, I will be glad to help you. Please like this video. Thanks for watching.